Hello sports fans, hope you're having an excellent and beautiful day today. I'm out in the wide open plains of the Paldea region in Pokemon Violet, where I'm about to do something so unbelievable, I thought I would have to stop and show it to you up close and personal. Are you ready for this? Here goes. Was your mind blown? Okay, okay, let me try that again, this time in Legends Arceus. Wow, incredible stuff. But maybe you're somehow still not impressed, so let me explain. This simple act, freely jumping up and down, completely redefines the way that the world of Pokemon works. Everything has changed because of this one simple action. The way that we consume these games has effectively been entirely deconstructed. This is freely autonomous, player-controlled jumping that can be used to travel and circumvent just about any obstacle in this new vision of the Pokemon overworld presented by Gen 9. All you need is Koridon or Miridon in Scarlet or Violet, and Wordier in Legends Arceus. And you can perform this rare act that Pokemon has prevented us from freely doing in virtually every case before these games. It's so shocking to me, because in almost every case before these titles, we're talking 8 generations and 20 something years of Pokemon games, this is a completely banned activity. And not just one that we're not supposed to do, it's something more of a literal incompatibility. The flow of every map, obstacle, and progression is built with a completely flat plane in mind. You go around things, you remove objects that are in your way, and you essentially teleport from plane to plane in ways that are flavored with a variety of in-world gimmicks. By and large, Pokemon as we know it is a flat game. But it's never really felt that way when you play it. Because two things that Pokemon has always handled beautifully are perspective and flair. The maps are designed in such a way that you are guided along certain paths and the camera work and interactive elements imply depth even if it isn't physically there. Like look at Route 1 in Kanto for instance, the very first route in any game, and they were already doing unreal things with perspective. Because you start the game in the town immediately south of it, you're forced to interpret this map from the bottom as you go up along its path. But you're quickly met with Pokemon's classic ledges, these little notches on the ground you can hop over, but only if you approach them from the correct direction. These work to give the illusion that you're jumping from a higher elevation down to a lower one, and presumably with a difference that's too high to jump back over. And with these ledges littered along a winding path upwards to Viridian City, you get the feeling of walking up a hill, even though the physical map itself is completely flat. The dirt path is winding, and interlaced with ledges that makes it feel like you're walking up some sort of back road that's kind of a strain to climb, but is also incredibly easy to go barreling down the side of if you run at it the right way. If I again take all the fun out of it, however, this is simply just a straight line with the ledges acting as one-way tiles. But the framing of this place gives it perceived verticality and flow. In the same vein, if I could actually jump on this route, really go up, that feeling that they curated would essentially be out the window. This is about as simple as the concept could get, but it's really cool the way games can use contrivances and confines like this to ultimately create more feeling than we would have without them. Limitations can end up being the essential piece that creates a game's atmosphere. But what about those places and mechanics that are more than just implied verticality? I think of the hotel area in Diamond and Pearl. You've got this beautiful, tiered resort with buildings and structures spread up and down these terraces, and the beauty comes entirely as a result of perspective. Perhaps even a bit of that forced perspective that's all the rage these days? It's the camera work that pushes this landscape into feeling like a masterpiece, rather than just existing as the idea of one. Default position for the camera is already slightly angled forward, and it really pushes a height for the buildings and terraces. Of course this is the case for the entire game, but elevated platforms like this are all designed to be facing forward, in a way, for a constant cohesion between the space you're existing in and the way that you're looking at it. Even better though, and I'd wager this is the important part, the camera moves just right when you go up and down the stairs. And there's kind of this weight applied to the camera's movement, because when you crest the stairs or get off the bottom of them, it swings into place by just a hair. And then that is paired with a slight increase or decrease in the radial field of view. You can see just a tiny bit more if you go upwards. And thank goodness too, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to see today's sponsor. See, it's right over there in the corner. Yeah, for real, this video is sponsored by Dimensionals, an all-new, fully-produced roguelike RPG with turn-based mechanics that takes place across a universe of high-stakes adventure and intrigue. I really like this game. 
Enough to write this little blurb about it even, because of two main things. For one, it is ultra stylized. The art, the music, and the writing are all dripping with personality. And the whole comic book vibe is excellent and played in complete earnest. So the pageantry is wonderful and immersive. Not to mention the expressive roster of characters. They are colorful, sharp, and so easy to get invested in. I am personally a huge fan of this grandpa character. He's slamming his giant shields around while looking and sounding great. This guy's got a real zest for life. Thing number two, Dimensionals completely subscribes to the classic philosophy of easy to learn, hard to master. And good thing too, because there's a lot going on here. Just on its face, you've got the mechanics of a roguelike, a turn-based RPG, and a hero builder all in one. But the emphasis is on fun, with a ramping complexity. The sky's the limit with so many mechanics and combos you can tap into, but it's just as willing to guide you and show you the way there. And I just can't vibe with a game if it can't do that gracefully. If all that's your type of thing, the game is out on Steam right now, and you can grab it using my link in the description, and snap back out of the corner. How's that for perspective? Perspective is really all there is separating this resort from a flat field somewhere in the Midwest. It nails the feeling of going up and down and gazing upon the grandeur spread out before you, but to actually do it would be to pull back the curtain on the entire presentation. If you had the actual ability to jump, you'd lose the framing of a place like this. And then ultimately, a little bit of the magic might go with it. Anything that would let us truly leave this fixed plane, not just exclusively jumping, and allow for movement in the coveted third dimension, would not only change that perspective, but also the physical, spatial relationship that we have with these worlds. Turn to your favorite 3D platformer or open world game of your choosing. It's not just the way we move within the world, but also the way the world moves in response to us. Probably one of the most classic examples of this was the move from 2D to 3D Mario and how it posed unique challenges for the developers of Mario 64. Doing this is so easy and straightforward, but now there are so many added pieces and struggles by just being able to do this and wanting to do this. There's a big problem, but also big solutions to be had, in both the new way Mario moves, but also the 3D world around him. Mario games really felt this in the controls and movement options, but plenty of other complicated game ideas could only be visualized with these new tools. The first thing that comes to my mind is the shooter genre, my personal choice of course being Fortnite. The 3D space allows you all the freedom in the world to jump and shoot around however you see fit. You're afforded all this freedom, but it also comes with a much higher difficulty. It's simply harder to hit a shot with all this extra space for things to go wrong. But what does any of this have to do with Pokemon? Well, nothing, really. But that's also the entire point. They can manipulate our interpretations all they want, but the fact remains that these design qualities have never been a part of Pokemon. But in dedication to the illusion of depth, they've gone to careful lengths to even manipulate the actual ways that we physically interact with the world, much more than just the ways that we perceive it. Field moves are a great example of this. The ability to climb a waterfall or a rock face on the back of your Pokemon bends the established rules and further extends the feeling of freedom in the overworld. It's movement like this where Pokemon really makes a show of things. The sound and visuals that usually accompanies one of these actions turns them into something really special. Take the move Rock Climb, for instance. You hear the whimsical little jump of hopping on your climber's back, and then they rip through the rock wall with this rugged thumping noise. Dirt and debris are flying everywhere, and then you hop back off at the end. It's adventurous. It's exciting. You and your Pokemon just scaled solid rock and ascended to new heights. But we should also take at least some note of what's really happening here. Stripped of all its in-world meaning, this move is a tool that teleports the player from one plane to another. The location and direction of which being indicated by the line of stones on the wall. But make no mistake, this type of move is real movement. When I use Waterfall, I am really leaving my current pool of water and moving to a distinctly different one somewhere else. And that is unique, dare I say exciting even. But the rules of this world were never broken. The most cynical view of this experience would be that I just simply stepped on a warp tile, was teleported to another one, and now I'm walking around in a different room. Which I don't think really even matters from a sensory perspective. The older games do more than enough to create feeling. It's more a matter of the toolbox the player has access to, and then how those tools inform a world's creation. Like speaking of warp tiles, a thought I remember very strongly from my childhood playing Pokemon Leaf Green was that the warp tile puzzle in Celadon City's Team Rocket hideout. These tiles will send you in the direction their arrow is pointing, and you don't stop until you land on one of these orange tiles, which 
I guess have like anti-spinning technology in them or something. The fun and challenge of this puzzle though is that the arrow tiles can be chained together and they'll launch you all around the room while you try and figure out the correct starting point to get launched to your intended destination. But my thought at the time was always, why doesn't this kid just step over the tiles? He's got long legs and runs so fast, you're telling me he can't hurdle this? But instead of thinking about the things that I couldn't do, I should have been thinking about the things that I could do. Because we can only navigate and experience a puzzle like this because we can't jump. If I could, this puzzle wouldn't exist. The architecture and interaction of this entire world were informed by that lack. Some of the coolest places in older gen Pokemon have their mechanical architecture at least partially informed by this. I love dashing across Sky Pillar's broken floors as I outpace the tile literally crumbling behind me. I love the Gen 5 Ice Gem launching me around on its frosty roller coaster floors. I love navigating the stone steps on the X and Y Route 8. I love exploring the dimly lit corners of Eterna Forest as I snake through its overgrown foliage. And all of that is because you cannot jump. But now? You just can't. You can bound over any obstacle in your path. You can sneak your way up steep mountain walls, and you can effortlessly glide through the air with style and finesse. Now you can actually go wherever you want. And the world has changed a lot as a result of this. The freedom comes with a complete rehaul to the architecture of the world, and this goes far beyond just the buildings or structures. The effects of this change rippled across the fabric of Pokemon society. Like here's a simple example, forced battles with overworld trainers are a staple of the old formula. They make up a huge chunk of the gameplay loop as you wander your way through the routes, but now I can just… up and the potential threat has been neutralized, just like that. Now I assume this change properly came as a culmination of numerous design modifications, but even so, there is a major part of this relationship dependent on my inability to go up. And for another thing, just look around this place. There's so much more space. The world is wider and so much more open. The new movement can't really coexist with the tightly mapped corridors and dungeons of the old structure. Now we've got this previously unimaginable high highs and low lows, but also so much more empty space. Which isn't a criticism at all, either. It's just… different. Pokemon has entered a completely new frontier with this change. The worlds that we'll see from now on will look behave and interact in entirely different ways from what we're used to. This has essentially become a brand new game. This new frontier has also brought about new locations and experiences that are only possible on this side of the change. The thing that brought on this entire line of thought for me was scaling the mountain in the teal mask area of the Scarlet and Violet DLC. The mountain is such a vertical dungeon, inside and out. I get a real kick out of parkouring along the jagged rock structures and getting to these really complicated edges of the mountain. There's also a pretty intricate cave system within the dungeon that has completely vertical sections. It sort of feels like one of those hamster tubes cities at certain points. Both of these aspects give a real thrill to just exploring the mountain, not even mentioning the story beats that take place on the physical location. I think the ice area in Arceus is also another particularly fun example of the new limits as well. The snowscape is so rugged, with layer after layer of exploration for you to play inside. It communicates the harshness of the tundra so well, and I don't think that would be possible without the freedom of movement and perspective. I'm always one for a good water feature or an ice feature in some cases here, but they are even better with this full range of motion. Oh, I love a good video game waterfall. Surrounded by beauty, by the way. Snowpoint Temple is also a standout landmark. The structure was technically layered when it originally appeared in Diamond and Pearl, but now it really lives up to the name. This is a full, complete temple to explore. And of course, likely one of Pokemon Design's all-time crown jewels, and an emblem of what's possible in these games with 3D, we have the mystical Area Zero in Central Paldea. There is so much good here in terms of design, but the physical exploration in specific might be some of the absolute best Pokemon has to offer. The crater very naturally unfolds as you make your way deeper into the depths, and because you're journeying down rather than the usual forwards, it takes full advantage of the complete sphere of motion. I personally feel very rewarded by jumping around this specific map. With such a vibrant and intriguing aesthetic, it is so stimulating just to move around and explore every corner, and you get some real variety in the experience as you go deeper and deeper in the location. Area Zero is a wonder like we've never seen before in the Pokemon world. It is so dynamic and different compared to what we've experienced before this point, but I can't help but think this is only the beginning. The depth, 
discovery, and experiences now available in these games could usher in a proper new age for this series, with a line squarely drawn between the new and old. In some ways, it's a little bittersweet, because without a complete reversion in mechanics, Pokemon has entirely left the old way behind. Because now, we can jump. And everything has changed. That's all I got for you, folks. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Droomish out.